going to step number seven. Step number seven, it's about interview. Uh, interview, I know a lot of people will be very, very, very uh, like uh, afraid, anxiety, and they they don't even know that what they're going to ask. But uh, you have been on this journey. You have been on this uh, food. W- w- what is what, what is about this step number seven? Oh, this step number seven, it's it's very quick and simple, but uh, there are some things you have to consider before you, you get ready for the interview. Mm-hmm. So during the the step six and step five, once you submit your DS-260, basically, before you submit your DS-260, you have, like, there are things they consider. Mm-hmm. If... Let's say the police clearance form we are talking about. Okay. That is to say if you have never been convicted okay. in a six month stay in the country. Mm-hmm. Let's say. So that's when they may even consider but, hey, but before you, you go into those, uh who does interview? Do they send the officers? Do you go to uh US embassy in your country? You have to go what? to the US embassy in a country. So, so everything h- how how do, do do how do you get the date and time? Because we, we are just jumping yeah, in, in that's the interview. Why, that's why you're pulling back from the interview a little bit. Okay. We have not stepped to that step yet. So mm-hmm. now, th- let's say you finished all the documents, supporting documents, mm-hmm. and all the information. Like everything is good and to go. you've never lived in any other country for more than six months. Mm-hmm. So now you submit everything. Before you hit submit on that form down below, mm-hmm. they ask you, the place of chargeability, which is the place where you want to do your interview from. Okay. Basically, when you apply from a country where the U.S. Embassy doesn't conduct their interviews from, oh, they have to man. send to the nearest country. Before 20- uh, who, who does pay the, the fees and everything? You're on yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I, I want to let yeah. people that uh, don't think p- probably the U.S. government will pay for you. They're, they're not going to pay anything. Okay. Yeah, so... Now, what hap- what's happening is that you have to, by, uh, before 2018, mm-hmm. right, um, Rwanda applicants, they used to go to Kenya, Nairobi for the interviews. Oh, but now wow. they brought it to Rwanda. Oh, that's so, good for them. Yeah. So, your place of chargeability, the place that you want to do your interview, uh, interview. From, you have to select it down at the oh, bottom okay. of the form before you hit submit. Mm. So uh, d- is is it is it fine if I say like okay let's say probably in my country let's say uh, in probably I'm in France and I want to do my interview in Spain is it possible? It's very possible. By that time, you have to fly to Spain for the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If I say if I say like okay, it's okay. I'm gonna uh, do my best and cover my expenses. Yeah, no problem. You can go anywhere you want. Okay, good, good, <laughs> yeah, good yeah, to yeah. know. Good to know. Yeah, so that's when you're going to go for your interview. So now you submitted your DS-26 and everything. Mm-hmm. So before you go to the interview, you're going to have to get first what they call the first newsletter. They call one one and a First newsletter. Yeah. And the form code? One, uh, one, the first newsletter is one NL. It's like one the NL. Brief, the abbreviation of one new, uh, the first newsletter. Mm, so okay. this means th- when you receive this, it's okay. because your case number is in the range of people who's gonna get interviewed in the next two months. Okay, okay. W- once you get that notification or that letter, that means you are among the people who has interviewed in two months. Exactly. Wow. So, you already know your case number is between that range. Okay. You have to be ready, right? You have to get ready. So, that's why they put two months in between. Maybe you have financial issues. Maybe you have to... Maybe request for, like, you know, travel documents. Maybe you need to fly to Spain for the interview. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to tell your boss, no, hey, I may need, like, a few days off to get ready for my interview. Things Mm -hmm. like this. Yes, yes. So, that is the time... In two weeks' time. Okay. From that. From that period. You okay. have to receive the second newsletter to NL. So they do send everything through the email that you provided in your application? Exactly. Okay. At so, this phase. So don't change your email. The email put in the applications. Okay. Right now, you don't, you're not allowed to change everything. Anything, anything. Anything. Yeah. So you have to be mindful about this. Good. Good. 
So once you receive the second one, okay. that's when you're going to know, hey, at this date, I'll be having an interview. Okay. So that's when you have to get ready and then go for the interview. Wow. Wow. Get ready. I know there is a, a lot of people who have interview coming soon. Oh, you already done your interview. You want to know the next step. All those who want to apply next year. Oh, you, you already have, I think, the information needed. And we're going to uh, do the recap before we finish here. But uh, Jado, let's go to step number eight. If, if, if you didn't uh, forget anything about uh, the step number seven. But we, we can go ahead and go to prepare for the interview uh, because uh, there is an interview but there is another thing say prepare for the interview which is step eight and step seven it's kind of confusing for me because how am i going to prepare for the interview and i'm already done so the thing is now you received the date for interview mm -hmm. but you have to go for let's say medical examinations Okay. The medical examinations and everything, these are very confidential. They are sealed envelopes mm -hmm. from your medical whatever, provider, provider mm -hmm. to the embassy. Yes. And here now, your family, let's say you're not single, your family is now involved. Everybody so on the everybody case. Everybody on this case is involved. Mm -hmm. So now, this is what's going to happen next. Once you're done with that phase, you have to review your form, the form you submitted to the the, the, the form DS260 you submitted mm -hmm. to the embassy, you have to review all the informations. And then also you have to review your documents mm -hmm. if they support what you've said in okay. this form. Basically. Let's say your birth certificate says you're born in Burundi. Mm -hmm. Is DS260 saying that you're born in Burundi? So basically every everything has to be similar. Everything has to be similar. Your high school diploma says you graduated in 2012. Is, is it, it the, same? the same thing in DS260? Mm -hmm. Your first name is Jean or your last name is Jadot. Maybe Jadot is your first name, Jean is your last name. If that's, you switch them over, it's that's, a case. That's a, that's a problem it's as a well. It's a big problem. Ooh. And Ooh. if you say you're born in October 1994. Now, these documents say you're born in May 1994. It's a big problem. Uh, how about maybe middle name and probably on, on DS 260 didn't put a middle name? If you didn't put a middle name, it's another case. That might Still. be somebody else. Ooh. So you have to make sure your ID, passport, everything match Look. the information. Mm -hmm. So now, at this point, that's why they say prepare for the interview. Prepare for the interview. And so they they are telling you to get ready everything. Check all the information, all the mm -hmm. paperwork you're bringing to the interview. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, the finance comes here as a big issue. Oh, they, on on this step. On this step, yes. Wow. Because they tell you, hey, this is what you need. This is what you'll have to pay for mm -hmm. the visa interview. Mm -hmm. Each individual must pay three hundred and thirty dollars. Three hundred and thirty dollars. Yes, if you have a family of four, you have to multiply times by four. Times times four. And these are non-refunded mm. fees. The first thing you're gonna get, you get there, you get the number, you sit down, you till, you wait until they call you up there. Once you get to the office. Yes, once they you you, you get to the office to meet the consular officer or the mm -hmm. embassy officer for the interview. Mm -hmm. So once you get in there, you get called. Mm -hmm. That means you have to put the primary applicant, you need to put your documents separate. Okay. And your family documents as well separate. Okay. Once you get called upon, you stand up, you go there with your family, then you you hand over the fees first. You have to pay first. Oh, you have... <laughs> yeah. The first window, you have to pay first. Okay. Yeah. Basically, you have to give all the money order that you already have or cash or anything. Yeah, because the owner, they're going to calculate and say, hey, I think if you're paying, you know, local currency in dollars, this is how much you're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And then how many, like, how many are you? It's me, my wife, and my son, three of us. So okay. $990. That's oh, okay. it. Okay. Okay. So you go back to sit and then on another window, they're going to call you again. You hand over the documents. Okay. You go back to sit until now. The visa so ba basically, you are you telling out. us the the step by step once you get to the office. Yes. What happens when you get there? Mm -hmm. First thing to do, pay your fees. Uh, second thing, I'll go to uh, hand over your paperwork. And then the next one will be uh, the interview person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's step number eight. Prepare for the interview. 
we have seen that you have to make sure that all your information are matching. That's number one. Number two, make sure you have money to cover all the expenses for your uh, for your family members on the case. Uh huh. Jado, uh, we are going to step number nine, where the applicant have to do the interview. We are now in a room. Uh, probably, what's going on? Did they ask you about the American history? Did I ask you do, uh, what's going on there? <laughs> uh, no, nobody asked you about that. They already know you have no clue probably the American <laughs> history. So basically, on this tape, um, mm-hmm. there are things they consider most. Right? You might have a problem. Let's say you're not ready. You haven't found maybe the. Uh, visa fees mm-hmm. you're still struggling but you still have in mind your fiscal year okay so you may reschedule the appointment or oh, if if you don't have enough if you money. have any issue or oh, if there is any issue uh, yeah. between in your case or something yeah, is yeah. Th- that you be... think you think the issue might persist until you go for the interview mm-hmm. so you may reschedule another day Oh, uh, do, do you call them? Do you email them? Do you what, what do you do to, you to have let them to know? email them and then the email is the email the USIS send you to contact them to. Mm. So it's it's a different email and also there's a structure of communication. Okay. It's your email, your case number. So so how about if I don't know okay. English? How how am I gonna communicate? If you don't know English let me say I don't have Eng- I, I don't know English and uh, it's probably going to be hard for me to get an you interpreter. You need to find someone to help you out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah, see. yeah. Basically, there are people people will always be there to help you. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah maybe go to the internet cafe and tell them about this. People will be excited to help you from nothing. Okay, <laughs> yeah. good. So, uh-huh. basically this is what they're looking for. So, once you get there for the interview, okay. Now with all the things we have said in the room mm-hmm. you pay the visa you hand over your documents mm-hmm. the third step Everyth- is just everything is ready to go yeah now you get called upon you of course you meet the counselor he greets you you have to greet him or her back mm-hmm. and he asks you just a few questions I, I like the way you are giving out you know? the tips <laughs> yeah so <laughs> you ask you the questions hey what's your name what do you do for a living is this your family if you're married what's mm-hmm. and then they're gonna say hi to your wife to your kid they ask your kid how, how, what's your name how old are you oh, they ask your wife man. it's like if a they teasing mess up. A little bit. <laughs> if they mess up you need you need like to back them up because oh, I don't man. think it's gonna be a big issue the big deal will be you okay but of course a kid may say I'm five yeah maybe he's six or four maybe he doesn't but know but the birth certificate okay. proves it you know mm-hmm. because of course they don't consider his opinion okay but this is what happens. They ask you the basics. Okay. That is the easiest interview you'll do for the visa ever. Wow. Because... So don't have any anxiety. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't no do problem, anything. Nothing. Don't do anything. As long I, as your document are matching, don't worry. What I'm telling you is what is the document says and what happens at the consulate. But mm-hmm. the cases might be different because I had a different case That's from true. this. That's, That's true. a testimony for another day, right? Mm-hmm. But this is what happens. The information you have in the DS-260, that's what they're going to ask, ask you about. You. And they don't ask you about everything. They ask you about you. Like a basic information. Your family, your name, your profession, if you're working, mm-hmm. if you have a college degree, when did you graduate? Mm-hmm. What did you study? Okay. And they're going to ask you, who is your host? Mm. Like, what's the relationship? Even a friend, it's okay. Okay. And you have to confirm the address, the state where they live in the US. Do they do the look up and see if that person exists? No, no, no. I maybe in their background <laughs> checks whatever they can do that, but they just want to see if you say Desire Jones. Mhm. You know, Texas, Austin. Mhm. This address. They have to make sure the address it's American address, of it's course. A existing address. Yeah, the phone it's not like everything. a fake or yeah. just uh, a fake address. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But also something that might might happen, you may change the address mm-hmm. at the interview. Oh, maybe yeah. that person moved. Maybe that person moved or maybe that person no longer wants to host you. Okay. Something may yeah, something In might In that change. case would happen. They just have to change the system. It's simple. 
Okay, so you give them the new host or what, what does it work? How, how does it work? So they have to ask you the name of the new host. Mm -hmm. They have to ask you uh, how you've known each other, like what's the relationship. Mm -hmm. They have to ask you the contact information. They have to ask you the address. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. That's okay. the only thing they ask okay. you. Yeah. I, I think this interview is good. I think uh, we pass it. If, if everyone if passes. Me. <laughs> and there's a thing. If, you, if you're not comfortable doing it in English, mm -hmm. they, they ask you if you need a translator or someone to translate it for you. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Yeah, so they bring someone or they can also reschedule your appointment till someone is available. Do, do, can you bring your own interpreter or they do uh, provide interpreters? They provide interpreters. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's good. If you uh, worry about your English or anything, if you don't uh, speak uh, English, you, yeah. you see that you can still they, do your they interview. They ask me, are you comfortable to the interview in English? Wow. <laughs> That's the question. That's a good so, question. Yeah. Are That's you good comfortable? Question. Yeah. Nice, nice. So. Okay, again, uh, we, we want to inform people. If you, uh, uh, you already submit your application, if you probably want to do your application for the next year, if you already hear in the US, uh, the, I think this this is for you. This is for anyone who want to know what's going on, what's gonna happen, uh, who want to know like the whole information through the whole process. Jado, uh, the interview seems to be easy. Uh, why do you think probably it's easy for you? Maybe someone someone else might say, "Oh no, th this was hard." It's easy because everyone can get it because. You have a high school, right? Only mm -hmm. high school diploma is the only thing they consider most, right? Mm -hmm. No one is asking you about the finances, mm -hmm. financial statements. No one is asking you if you know English. Okay. No one is asking you. So, uh, so by the way, they don't they don't ask you if you have uh, probably a flight ticket, uh, if you can afford it, or you know. No, 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 they don't. They consider that you are ready to go. You are ready to go. That's it. And the only thing they also want to see, hey. Are you capable of going there and survive and live? Because this country needs everyone, mm. right? But also they need to, they need the assurance of this person. What he said in in files is he the same thing he's saying right now. Okay, so th yeah. those are the main uh, thing to consider. Exactly. Okay, good. So we are about to finish, but don't go far. We still have our step number 10. I know those people who want to go to know wh what's going on in step number 10, which is step, the last step of this process. Uh, Jado, our step number 10 says, uh, this is after interview. W what people should expect uh, after the interview? So, of course, after the interview, you have to expect two things. Either you're approved or you've denied the visa. Oh, but right there? Yeah, but here's the thing that can happen, <laughs> hey. right? 80%, you can get this visa approved. Okay. So after two days, That's you go 80%. back there, you, okay. get, you get your passport. So they don't tell you right away. That's after no. like one day or two days. Yeah, when you go back for your passport to see if you got a visa or not. Okay. So... No, 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 hold on. So, they, so tell us about that. I hear something about passport. Tell mm -hmm. us about the process over there. So what happens is like during the interview, mm -hmm. they are going to pull two different paperwork, like the documents. Okay. One is green, another one is pink, if I remember correctly. Okay. The pink one is to sign, congratulations, your visa is approved. Okay. Then... They're going to also have to give you another white paper with the information how you're going to pay for your green card. Oh. Right? Okay. The money you paid before was for the visa. Those, those were uh, yeah. visa application. Yeah. But now there's information how you will process the green card payments. Okay. But when they pull the pink one, mm -hmm. it's a denial or uh, pending. So that's oh. when they're going to have to give you back your passport okay but this case happens when and how okay let's say you have changed your status right okay you pledge you applied from single, from single to married now you're married and mm -hmm. a child mm -hmm. let's say you, a child is five years old mm -hmm. and and you have the wife 
Okay. And between the process, it's only six months. Okay. How are you going to explain that? Or probably you have two wives or three wives. Yeah. Uh, and now you, you you applied single before, and now you want to take advantage of taking everyone everybody, there. Everybody, everybody. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's not going to work. It's definitely no. Mm-hmm. And but so you cannot take anybody who will not specifically on the application. Yeah, you have to put like you have to go with everything you have said in applications. Okay, that's why they okay. consider. Don't bring your aunties. Yeah. Don't bring <laughs> your, your brother, uh, your or, brother or grandfather. So. so another thing is, once the once there is a certain type of change in, mm. in paperwork, right? Okay, we see that your last name. Is Jadot and your first name is Jadot and last name is Jean. Mm-hmm. So that means you're gonna get a pending. That's right. Right? It doesn't mean your visa is denied. It's a pending. So they tell you, hey, go, go correct. and correct this Then and bring us a regional copy that matches this. As long as you finish them. Yeah, but that can be hectic, bro. Mm-hmm. Because it takes time and you cannot go get the document. Then you come back. They have to call you, they have to book another appointment for you. Ooh, and so that can may, take months. Yeah, and the reason to why it's it can bring you anxiety or whatever is because once all this kind of all this process happens in your fiscal year, the mm. fiscal year starts uh, starts um, uh, starts in October until September next year. Mm-hmm. No, no, it, no, no, no. July next uh, year. July next, year, yeah. I think. So, uh, I June think so. or July. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when it ends, but. Once the fee square is closed and you haven't received an appointment, that mm-hmm. means that's it for you. It's denial. It's denial, and may they can they don't they don't they don't owe you an explanation. In oh. other words, they just your year has already closed, so now we're in a different year. It's 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 it means like you have to apply. Uh, again as a new as a new candidate uh, yeah, yeah. okay uh we are here uh, just to explain we are here to give information the uh, same information that you can find on the website with we are here just to make sure that um we are not um just giving you information as if we want it but you can check also uh the website of the uscis uh, spe- specifically uh this one for green card uh, lottery so it's information that it's there for everybody we are just uh, trying to uh, use or work with someone who went who went through the same process Jado, uh, I, i think this was the last process but i think uh, always someone we always need to know exactly what 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 will you consider someone to feel like okay this is the final step and i'm ready to go uh what what advice what advice will you or tell that person either you are in a pending position or either you have a congratulation message or either maybe it's a denial those are three people basically so what, what do we what will you tell them oh uh, what i would say is um once you get approved you get your visa Now it's time to get the money first. You need money to carry with you. Because once you travel, you're going to need this money. Mm-hmm. Even if you have a whole someone who's going to help you, you're going to need to learn things in the US and most of things they're not free, no free of service here. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. You need something to carry with you. And another thing after you pass the interview, they're going to give you an envelope. Mm-hmm. this envelope you're gonna have to carry it in your backpack or in your laptop bag mm-hmm. and then once you land the first airport you will enter in the US you have to hand that <coughs> sealed envelope to the homeland security so and uh, that's kind of like this yeah. this envelope it's uh, contain the medical records or what, what is inside the medical records and also the informations from the embassy all from the embassy yeah but that's one of the details they tell you is the medical records x-rays whatever mm-hmm. like uh, also the vaccinations and all these details okay. but they also have the information from the US embassy okay in that file so you don't have to open it so don't open if, it do you, if you open it man that's a deportation <laughs> they will not allow oh, you in the country okay okay yeah okay so and you get this envelope on which step once your visa is approved 
Oh, okay. So when you go back to pick up your passport, they give you this envelope as well. So basically on a step 10 still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final step. Yeah, on the final step. That's so, when they hand you the envelope and your passport. Yes, and congratulations. And uh, your stamp, the visa stamp and everything is in there. So after you get your visa right away, can you go tomorrow like the next day? Trust me, even the same night you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> go, resign your job, all say bye to your family and fly. Uh-huh. Yeah. So and how long am I have to wait in my country until maybe my my visas uh finish or expired? Uh, how how long uh, how long is uh expiration? So this visa is very short and it's very small. So so what happens is it's a very short term. So it's between four months and seven months. Mm-hmm. But most of the time you get five or six months. So basically it's just for you to get ready, organized and go. That's all. But if you finish like once your visa gets expired while you're still in the country, that's it. So, so basically six months, that's a maximum period. Yeah, yeah, basically six months. If you want to sell your stuff, save your money and then do yeah. whatever you want to go, but it's a six months max. Six months max. But actually... In terms of saving money and trying to gather some finances, you have to do it pretty early when you get selected. But you don't know if everything will go well. How am I going to sell my stuff and I'm not pretty sure that I'm leaving? Because every <laughs> every detail, unless you are busy, you are not taking atten- you are not paying attention to what the website says or what the consular officer is saying. Mm-hmm. You have to stay in the loop every month. They release mm-hmm. information. So the good idea is to uh, stay focused on the website, yeah. know exactly what they are informing all the applicant. Yeah, because the, the informations they ask you, the documents they ask you, they are very common. Every every state, every country provides mm-hmm. them. Okay. So they are giving you time to look for them. Okay. That's it. And so basically as long as you know that you have all the supporting documents required, you can even sell your land and your house and exactly. start and living somewhere. <laughs> of course because these are things takes time to sell as well. So you have to do that very early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, uh Shado, thank you very much man. Th- th- that was very very brief but at the same time very clear. Uh, if you have a question Yes. If you have something else, if you need to know better about this process, yeah, you can still give us uh, a question there. You can give us a call. The phone number we're going to put down in the comment. But Jado, oh, uh, w- w- what what do you think like uh, I mean, I know a lot of people scared to apply or sometimes they don't know the period. Uh, will you give us like a, a recap of what people need to to do or to know before they decide to apply for this green card. So the only thing you need you need uh, your high school diploma mm-hmm. and your passport. Wow. That's it. And if you have a family you need the same things and then uh wait until October October early October so day. So each each year each in October. Year in October November, there is a that's date. Time to apply. Okay, yeah. October yeah. and November. It's 30 day period. It's a month. Okay. So from October to November. To November. Yeah, but people tend to say the trick is to apply early, but no one knows, but try to stay in the loop of information once they release an application that mm-hmm. go ahead with your passport and your high school if you sure you have it, mm-hmm. apply. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, all right and thank you so so much for everything uh, and uh, I I feel like everybody now um we say that they are in a loop. I will say Jado, uh, thank you so much for this information, man. And you're most welcome uh, as long as we need to help people go through this uh processes and everything. I mm-hmm. think uh, the only thing I would say is just wish them a good luck. <laughs> All right, good luck to everybody who applied this year. I mean, this year I think they haven't applied yet. Uh, last year, I know you guys are in a process. Uh, so good luck in all the process. What, what would you say to people who got selected this year? 
Uh, for these people, <laughs> man, I would say if you want to host, I'm here. I can host you for free of charge. So <laughs> if if you, you don't have a, a host, if you feel like I'm struggling, everything is ready to go, but I don't have anybody, I am here, but I can host only one person. So if you feel like you, you don't have a host, come for, a for sure, for sure. Okay. I can host one person. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I can, I, I can say. And good luck in the whole process. Yeah, sure, sure. All yeah. right. Uh-huh. So that was it. That was it for today. And uh, thank you so much for allowing us to listen to us. And uh, Shadow, do you have anything you can probably tell the people? Or? Yeah, I mean, the last thing you'll, I would say is that, I mean, keep it up because people apply six or seven, eight times. Mm-hmm. Nice time oh, they yeah. get selected. Actually, I know a friend who applied, I think, seven times and the eighth uh that's that's when he got approved i think that's a person you talked to as well i applied two times but the second time i was lucky Ooh, you know? this guy who he was yeah. like on the seventh yeah so time. but keep applying and try just to get real information and the only thing i would say is like whether you get denied or pending until you're not called upon again just keep applying as a new entrance who so w- where else can you probably tell them to get information because i know people might get still in a loop but they're lucky that now they have a video they can use uh do you also have any places where do you guys gather like a green card holders who came in the same situation and probably ha- try to help those who are still out or still in the process uh, the thing is, like, of course, like, there are many uh, uh, websites that take advantage of these processes. They charge people for that. Okay. But the only website we'll get the information from is dvlottery.state.gov. DVLottery. Okay, good. Yeah, good. that's the only website you get real information from. Mm-hmm. All right. This is a, this is the end and I want to say thank you so much for listening to us and I'm pretty sure that if you are not very far I will say the next video is coming it's coming because uh, we are preparing something good for you uh, thank you so much and have a good weekend have a good weekend guys thanks for tuning in bye 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 bye